Okay, hello everybody, this is Budrich. Um, <laughs> actually, I just recorded um, uh, <laughs> one video that was one hour and 50 minutes long, but apparently I managed to, to disable the microphone uh, about 30 minutes in, so, so it was like, yeah, almost one and a half hour uh, no audio. So. Let's do it again, and it also was just a stupid video, two, two hours of that rambling, uh, no, one, no one wants that, you know. Uh, so let's, let's do it all from scratch, again, because it's kind of a cool thing, um, you know, when you don't know what to do, when uh, life is hard. What you want to do is to create your own fortune, and that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I have here uh, Fortune Arc Wiki page. Fortune is a stupid little. I would say it's it's a very stupid program. Uh, uh, all it does is um, when you execute Fortune, you will get a random funny quote from some magical place somewhere. You know. It looks like it's completely random, weird, whatever. And there is not that much like super useful things you can do with it. But sometimes you just want a nice little quote, you know, to, to <laughs> lighten up your your otherwise not so fun day. You know, you could you could do something like this. Fortune. Ah, okay. I guess we should put it in quotes like this. I don't know why I did that. There. And you can get a, a, a nice uh, dunstify with some random quote or whatever. I don't know. Uh, that's one, one uh, use case for this. But it could also be maybe you uh, are making a homepage and you want like a, a random quote on each uh, page or something, then it can be good to have like a random quote generating thing like fortune here or whatever. Uh, but as you could see, when I run fortune here, most of the fortunes are extremely lame and boring and often long and have like this stupid format or whatever. It's like, you cannot just put a random random quote on your homepage, for instance, you know, you, you want to be more in control of this fortune database. And that's what this video will be about how to create your own fortune database where we can put our own quotes. And we will do that in, in a very easy, convenient way here. I have actually already created since I just said that I, I made a two hour video went into this completely unprepared, had just woken up and just realized I need to create this, uh, uh, I need to create a new fortune collecting thing here. So why not just make a video and see how that, that goes, you know. Uh, but now I know exactly how everything works and I have also did already did some dirt tax that we don't need to, to do here. Uh, that was very sublime, w whatever, whatever. Let's take it from the start. Um, I have created here a, a, a project in Sublime here, so I guess, yeah, let's just delete this beautiful, oh, let's save it first, um, we do this, we create a backup of this, there, um, let's just ignore everything here. Here I have a directory uh, called Fortune. If I hit Control O here, we can see that this is USR Share Fortune. This is uh, the directory where all the f different Fortune databases are stored. And if you are using Arc and install Fortune, then you will install either Fortune Mod here or Fortune Mod Git from AUR. I have this one installed from, from Pacman here. So if you do Pacman search for Fortune, then you will see that here we have Cow Fortune and Fortune Mod, and that's the one I have installed. And when you install it, you get all of these. It's a lot of, of uh, Fortune databases here. 
and that's why it appears so random, you know. Uh, when, when you do fortune, you get some random stuff here. Sometimes it's political, sometimes it's from the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and whatnot, you know. And that's because we have a bunch of random uh, uh, databases here. Here I can see we have one called Pratchett, which I believe uh, are Terry Pratchett quotes, only containing two quotes, which is... that That's not really acceptable, in my opinion, because I Terry Pratchett was one of the funniest uh, uh, persons, I really like Terry Pratchett and, and his books, whatever. And then we can see here we have one called Pearl, which is like Pearl related, a lot of Larry Wall quotes and Larry Wall, also very funny, very cool guy. Uh, and what you can do is, is you can actually uh, execute Fortune and then the name of one of these uh, databases here. So if I do Pearl, then it would only print fortunes from the Perl database and um, of course I could also do Pratchett, whatever. And since we only had two quotes it would print the same same thing over and over again. Um, but what we want to do is create our own uh, 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 file like this and as you can see they are very... yeah let's take that Pratchett since it was so uh, short. Pratchett. And these this is how they work, you know, you just uh, add a quote and then on its own line a percentage character and then a new quote and then a percentage character and so on. It's extremely easy to create your own file looking like this, just copy pasting random quotes from around the internet or maybe write your own little funny quote, you know, and just separate them with percentage size. Uh, so I actually created here just uh, for, for this uh, this thing here um, in the video that that it no longer exists because I deleted it. But uh, where I created this fortune file with some random stuff here, separated by percentage, and then yeah, we can also see here because we have Pratchett here, but then we also have Pratchett dot that. And this is like a magic file that you need to be able to, to use this fortune fortune program. I know it, it, it gets weird when, when you record a video and then uh, and then re-record it, but whatever, that's what's happened now. So let's go here and then let's just uh, um, echo well, let's do this print f percentage s percent backslash n percentage percentage backslash n and then we can just uh, do some quotes here this will be just stupid one word will be its own quote and then we can redirect that to a uh, uh, quote db file here so uh, Let's let's have a good name now. Uh, my quotes. There. And now we can see if nothing uh, magic. My quotes. And here we have our own little quote file here. Amazing. So now one would think that we should be able to do fortune and then my quotes here. But you will see that this will not work because it's not a fortune file. We need that that magic file thing here. And luckily for us, uh, this amazing uh, homepage that is called wiki.arclinux.org tells us here how to create these magical uh, um, dat files. And it tells us uh, we should first create this uh, quote file with the percentage characters separating the quotes and when we have done so we can just use this command file which I have no idea what it really is, but it kind of works, and then uh, execute string file, uh, and then the path to the file, which by coincidence had the exact same example name as my example quote file here, but whatever. Let's just do that. String file, my quotes. There, now we can see my quotes created. There were 14 strings, the longest string was 7 bytes, the shortest string was 3 bytes. Uh, and now it actually created this my quotes that file here from the input here, whatever. And now we can actually do fortune my quotes, and now it works. Works. Now it will take a random 
quote <laughs> in quotation uh, uh, um, uh, words here from this list and just printed it. And it's completely random here. Sometimes it takes quotes, sometimes it says some, sometimes it just whatever. Cool. Um, but if, yeah, I don't know what happens if I remove this, then we will probably get some funny error or something here now if I try to run it now. Yeah, now nothing happens. It will only print. We don't really get an error, but whatever. The, w what's important here is if you modify the quotes, my quotes file, then you have to rerun this string file command. And now we can see there were only two strings and now we can do fortune. Now we will always get that for some reason. Maybe we shouldn't have a trailing percentage here. Maybe that's a bad thing. Will this work? I haven't really tried this. Hmm? Yes, one string. Yeah, this is... Okay, so we shouldn't have a trailing percentage. That's good. That's good to know. Okay, now we got the foundation here for how this adding quotes, uh, uh, creating our own quote database works. What we want to do now is create a script to make this a little bit easier and, and more convenient to work with. Um, so let's do that. Let's create a script. Uh, and as you can see here, I already created the script add quote, but we will create that again from scratch. So add quote.sh. Let me do a shebang here, bin bash. And then we can do echo testing. Does it work? Save this, go here, uh, do an ls, and then we can see add quote is not an executable because it's not green, because green is the color of executable files in my setup, whatever. So let's make it executable by executing change mode plus x for executable, and then the name of the file add quote.sh. Doink, and now we can do an ls again. Now we can see it's green, and we can also try this by executing add quote.sh. And testing, does it work? It prints the test string, it works. Perfect. Now I will also uh, create a symbolic link to this add quote into my path. Uh, and my path, uh, or one directory in my path, is uh, home directory slash bin. So let's do this lnfs force symbolic link, uh, use the file, and here it's important to, to write the full path to the file. Uh, and as you can see, I'm using pwd uh, environment variable here. Here it's it's important that you don't use tab completion, completion here, which you might want to do here. For example, doing this. You see, then it auto-completes here to .sh, but it will also, the auto-completion will escape the dollar sign here. And we really don't want that. We, we actually want this dollar sign. So, so keep that in mind. And it's also important to use to, to write the full path. Instead of the, the environment variable, you could actually write out the path, but you need to write the full path. And it doesn't work with dot slash add quote either because links, uh, whatever, let's not get into that. But we move that to bin add quote. And here I write it without sh uh, because if I do so, then we can source our ba bash rc file here. And now uh, add quote here is in our path, and we can just type add quote, and it will execute it, no matter where we are in 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 the uh, file system. Okay, good. When that is set up. Uh, <coughs> Let's also add, um, let, let's change this echo to uh, dunstify instead, or notify send, or whatever. So now if we do add quote, you see now it prints this notification here instead. The reason I wanted to add this is because then I can go into, yeah, this is when things will get weird. I have to look into this. This is the thing, my, 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 my rise here is kind of falling apart. There are so many <laughs> little bugs and stuff here uh, uh, all over the place. So let's first comment this and also go here. Ah, in one way, I have already added this here. But you know what? Let, let, let's do it anyway. I have added uh, a key binding here. Uh, 
super key, shift key and C that will execute add quote here. And I, uh, this is my i3 config. I've talked about this before. I, I really like to use variables like this. In, uh, so I have, have like a setting file here with all these variables. You see uh, W is actually translates to binds in mod 4 and so on X translates to this. So instead of writing long ugly lines, I can just write beautiful uh, short lines like this. Uh, I can read them. Maybe you can't, maybe you can, I don't know, whatever. So, um, when I have this, then I can just reload my i3 config. And this is where uh, the last video got uh, broken, because when I reloaded i3, the, the microphone uh, got muted. So, so let's see if I, because I really want to see this. Yeah, maybe it is, no, here, that, okay. Let's reload and see what happens here. So I might be, whatever, reload, or you know what, let's also add the key notification thing here, reload. No, but I think, I think the, the audio, can you hear me? Can you hear me? It looks like it's recording. I don't know why it, uh, recording, recording, the, no, I think this is working. Let's hope so. Whatever. Um, so now I have a key binding here, so I should be able to press Super Shift C, and there we can see testing. Does it work? Comes up here, and this is also my special notification that I enabled here that uh, displays all key bindings I execute from I3 for your convenience. Okay, good. Let's go back now to Fortune project um, and the way I want this fortune project to work or add quote uh, a script here to work is uh, either we pass uh, an argument uh, or any number of arguments and then those arguments will get added to the fortune file uh, and then the, the that file will get updated so it's it's kind of easy you know uh, create a variable called quote to add and that is equal to dollar star meaning all all arguments passed to the script add quote here and then we could also instead of dunstifying the, the, the test string there let's do quote to add okay now I'm gonna add quote hello everybody and then it uh, echoes that, you know. Perfect. But now we get an issue here when, when we uh, execute it without any arguments, of course. Nothing happens because we, do, we don't have any text and this, this will get really weird when we execute this from a key binding. Um, and this is also how, how we will use this program, like 99.9% .9 of the time we will execute it from the key binding. But let's, let's first uh, add the, the simple logic to add, add quotes to, to our my quotes file here um, and, and update the my quotes dot that uh, uh, file as well. First, I think I would like to create a, an environment variable, which I like to do like this, you know. Then we can call this uh, quote uh, db or something. I don't know. Is equal to, um, and then the path here tmp fortune my quotes. So home tmp fortune slash my quote. There. Perfect. Um, then we can, if we have a quote to add, uh, we, 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 we just append that to my quotes file here and then regenerate the dat file. But first we test if we have a quote to add. So I, I, I do this test, uh, said flag quote to add. Uh, so if this, if we don't have a quote to add, 
then we could um, do a danceify no quote to add a port and then we can do exit one here like that and then we can test this add quote no quote to add a board and same now i can i can hit super shift c no quote to add a board perfect um, but if we have a quote to add then it will not exit here and then we just uh, uh, then we can do this print f um, percentage Hmm. What I want to do is, is be sure to remove, so we don't want the leading percentage sign here. Not sure, Let, let's try that, because that would make everything much easier if we can have a leading one here. No, that seems to work as well, great, good. So, so then we do this, we, we empty out this guy here and then the format string is percentage percentage that is a literal percentage sign new line percentage s new line uh, quote to add, append that to quote, quote db, which is the file here. Here. What we could do is also create, because if this file doesn't exist, it will get created here when, when we append here, but uh, it will not create, but it will not create the directory here. If this directory wouldn't exist, we would get like an error here. So, so it can be a good idea here to actually create uh, the, the directory by doing quote db, but then we remove the file name and just create the directory like this. So to test this, we could just change this really quickly like that and then do add quote hello everybody there you can see it created a new directory inside that we have our quote uh, and we also want to do that the string file after we have added the quote so string file quote db and then we could print a notification dancedify uh, added a, a quote thank you everybody how is it going there and we can see we get now some information here about this that it doesn't really matter this is printed to standard error so so whatever um, and this also means now that we can do fortune um, test my quotes and now it should take a random quote from that yeah and it kind of works you know great Mm, but this is kind of stupid and just a really inconvenient way uh, to add quotes. We have to find a quote uh, and then uh, we have to pass uh, the quote as one single argument or as arguments to, to our add quotes command on a terminal and stuff. And that's not really what I want. Uh, I would rather have it so that... Uh, uh, so that we could just select text, hit our key binding, and then add the selected text to the quote database. And to do that, we will use, uh, because now I select this text here, and this, remember, this is uh, Sublime GUI, uh, 
kind of GTK, whatever application. I select the text, and then we can run, if you have this installed, I think you can run Excel, and then it will print whatever is in, in the primary selection. And the primary selection is what was selected, the last thing that was selected. So now if I select this instead here, and now run Excel, then it will only contain those things. Cool. Um, so what we can do here is add a default. If we don't pass any arguments here to our add quote, we could just uh, set quote to add to be the content of the command Excel. Uh, but sometimes, you know, uh, the selection is also empty and if it is, then it will uh, uh, abort here. Cool. Uh, and now things are getting a bit interesting. Let's go here. Let, let's add this uh, interesting text here. Now I hit Super Shift C. Add a quote. Thank you. Okay, that means everything was completed here. It reached this part. And if we look into my quotes here, now we can see we have this last quote here, a long bloat or a long uh, single string thing. Because um, even if it looks like these are different lines, this is actually just, there are no backslash n, there are no line breaks in this text here. But sometimes there is, you know, maybe here I would guess this, this contains uh, line breaks, I think. So added that, thank you. And now you can see, yeah, and here we, now we have this uh, in, in our quote database file here. Cool. Um, but sometimes, you know, you, you, you maybe add uh, a quote or, or some text that looks like this, but you want to format it before you store it in your uh, quotes database here. Maybe you want to add some, some line breaks, maybe you want to indent something, maybe you want to add like the author of the quote at the bottom or whatever. Maybe you just want to edit, edit it somehow. So um, I have figured out how to uh, do that open it in, in the text editor, which for me is sublime, uh, so we can edit it before we save it, uh, and, and so on. Uh, another thing that could can be nice is to, to, to like add a preview. Yeah, let's just create a variable here. I don't think I would, this is also something that, that I um, really uh, lost myself in, 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 in the <laughs> now deleted infamous two hour stupid video but let's just create a variable here called quote uh, with the content of quote to add here uh, the reason I, I, I create a, a different variable here is maybe you would like to add some some uh, add some some um, uh, formatting to, to the preview, maybe limit the, the amount of text, maybe remove line breaks, maybe remove indentation, whatever. But let's not get into that now. And then we do dunstify, and then we can do a printf uh, percentage s backslash n percentage s. Um, well, let's add two line breaks even here. And then add quote colon and then preview that and then we put this in one argument like that. Uh, I also like to do an R uh, 1334 or something here. So we got a unique ID so we easily can close this notification here. <coughs> I don't know if you're following here, but now if we select, we can select this again, it doesn't matter. Select that, Super Shift C. Now you can see, now it, uh, we get a lot of, of notifications here. One added quote, thank you. This is the last one. This is the first one. We actually hit this uh, uh, key binding, then add a quote there, uh, previewing the quote, and then it added the quote printing that notification. 
But what I want to do here is uh, uh, have the choice to um, to see what I want to do with, with, with the notification here. Either uh, uh, edit the notification or just save it or abort. So don't, don't add it if, if because sometimes you hit this key binding and you didn't select the, the proper quote or whatever, you know. Um, so let's use let's use let's use the menu here to keep it simple. But personally, I would actually use my own uh, Rofi wrapper script i3 menu. But if I, if I start using that here now, it becomes like a thing in a thing in a thing, you know. So let's just keep it simple and and use uh, uh, the menu. Create a variable. I call it choice. Um, then we can do a printf again percentage s backslash n and then the choices can be uh, save edit abort or cancel uh, let me pipe this to d menu keeping it simple um, and when we have done the choice then we close this notification if it's still open capital c ID of the notification, so it will automatically close there. And then we could actually exit the script here just to test this a bit before we go further. Um, let's select something. Let's select this. Super Shift C. There. Now we can see we get the notification with the preview, but we also get this menu up here. For some reason, this red thing here. I don't know what that is, but whatever. Uh, just select something. Ah, it, the red thing was from this this thing here. So let, let's do it again. Super Shift C and then I select edit and as you can see it closed now the notification automatically with, with this done if I close command here. Great. Um, so we don't actually no I'm not sure what's going on here. The cursor disappeared. Uh, what, what, what happened? Now, why don't I have a cursor? Uh, typ typical D menu weirdo stuff, you know. Uh, okay, for some reason the, the cursor disappeared and also it feels like... Let, let's look now. Am I recording? Am I recording? There, cursor is back. Okay. <laughs> don't worry about it. Mm. Case choice in uh, save colon semicolon semicolon edit colon semicolon semicolon default. Um, there we can do dunstify. Uh, no action abort abort quote save and exit one I guess we should add these guys here as well and that and then we close this case with an ESAC let's try it again Select something, Super Shift C, selecting edit, it should just exit gracefully there, kind of. Let's do it again. If I select uh, cancel, then it will use its default action here, and we should get that no action, abort quote, save. Good. <clears throat> so if we select save here in that menu, uh, that means that we just want to save it and do this this stuff. So this is actually fine here. The colon here, that means just whatever, do nothing and continue on. And now it's disappeared again. What, what's going on here? Uh, but if we select edit here, then we will do some, some weird stuff here. Kind of advanced uh, dirt hacking have to, have to be done. Uh, maybe we should test it one one final time here. Let, let's let's clean this whole file. 
and then copy this, super shift C, uh, add quote, looks like this, yeah, looks fine, save that there, added the quote, thank you, and then we can see the quote is added, nice. Um, what I want to happen when we select edit is I would like to open open the text that we that we want to save uh, or edit I want to open it in a new sublime window uh, and when that window is closed it will take the content of the file uh, and re-execute this uh, add quote command with the new content of that file blah 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 it's in one way it, it is not that that complicated we could we could uh, try to, to plot it a bit like this here. Um, first, we, we we save the quote to add here to a, a file. I wonder if this works. Quote to add. I just want to see if this works. Is hmm. or is this? You know, we we have all gotten a bit crazy here. Ah, whatever, Let, let's just do it the normal way, you know. Echo quote add into uh, a temporary file. We should store that temporary file in, in a variable here. I believe there is like a make temp uh, command you can use to create temporary files, but whatever, we, we will, uh, we will uh, keep track of this stuff here. So f is equal to tmp quote to add and here now we add uh, the, the content of quote to add to the file quote to add I, I guess it's quote to add tmp maybe, maybe that makes it easier maybe not whatever and then what I want to do is open that file in sublime but if I would just uh, add here subble uh, F, then it will open this temporary file in the sublime window that uh, had fo last had focus, meaning this window. So I guess this should work now if I just select something here. Uh, and then we can do... Uh, 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 af after that, let's remove the file. Or let's do exit here. So selecting something, super shift C, selecting edit. And you can see now it opened this uh, quote to add tmp file here in sublime and i just save and quit there um, but there are a couple of things here i don't want to open it in 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 this window i would like to open it in its own window uh, and i would also want to wait uh, when when that window is closed then i know uh, the editing has been done and then it will take the content of the file so, so we need to wait for the window to close somehow and that's actually very easy you, if we do subble help here we can see that the few command line options available for us for sublime text and one is called wait here actually and one is called new window so if we use both of these then it will actually create a new window with just this file open no projects or anything and the, the script will halt till we, we close that window. Um, so if I do subble new window uh, wait and then the file here uh, tmp uh, quote to add tmp here. If I do this command you can see now it opens sublime, a new sublime window but you can also see this terminal here, it's now waiting for, for this window to close. Uh, 
So if I close this window, there, now the, the, the script continues or, or yeah, this command is done. So this is exactly what we want to do. Um, and it's fairly straightforward if you don't have a weird tab layout, costume, instance name, stuff, everything is crazy going on here, you know. Uh, but if you for some reason have that, like I do, uh, then this gets a, a bit more complicated. And I actually just added a, a little modification to my sub launch, uh, uh, um, sub -launch script. So you can use this wait with sublaunch and it can open a, a, a special uh, a, a project. And actually, in, in the last video, I created this little project here, subaltemp. And here you can see subaltemp. It, it, it just uh, have, have this directory here with, with some stupid file, whatever. Um, that's all this uh, project contains. But this project also has some custom settings here, uh, setting uh, this project, every file in this project will have this font and it will not have line numbers and stuff like that. So that's cool. Um, God damn it. And I also added in my i3 uh, config here a window rule. Uh, did I remove that now? Layout horizontal. No, here it is. So if a window with the instance sublime underscore subaltemp uh, is created, place that window in the B container. So let's save this here, reload i3. Uh, and uh, uh, if a window with this instance name is, is uh, created, place it here. But you will see now, when, when, when I just open this, it will open normally, it will not place itself there or anything. And even if I change to that project, simple temp, it, it will not place itself there either. Um, and now you can see it even open multiple windows and stuff. It, it's really weird this working with Sublime uh, uh, and projects and stuff. That's why I created my own uh, sublaunch uh, command there. So when you, for this to work, uh, you need sublaunch, uh, and you also need to have already created a, a, a project uh, called subaltemp here. Because when I execute uh, sublaunch, I can do it with a, a profile uh, command line option, and then specify a profile. A profile is something I have invented uh, for Sublime here, and, and what it is is it is both a window and a project. It binds the project and the window together. So profile will look now for, for a project file called subaltemp in the profile uh, or project directory. If it finds that, it will open a new sublime window with that project and it will rename the window to, to sublime underscore uh, yeah, this. So this should work now. Subal Profile subal tm. There, now we can see it opened this window here. Here we can see this is the. We can also see, uh, I know it's very difficult to read here, but this is the instance name sublime underscore subal tump, and this my main sublime window is called sublime main. By doing this, uh, we can actually achieve, achieve what we want to here. So, and I can even now. Uh, with my latest additions here to sublaunch, uh, use this wait command as well. And then we will get uh, uh, exactly what, what we are looking for here in our fortune script. So instead of executing subble here, we do sublaunch uh, profile subaltemp wait and it's important to have the file as the last argument here now uh, then we can select something let's do it from here add quote just to see that the script now will wait open the window uh, yeah for, first we get the notification uh, and the uh, choice here we want to edit this 
and then we should open that in, in this place here. And you can see the script is still waiting for us to do something here. Uh, if I just save this, there, now it continues. <clears throat> but this is very hackish and stuff, my own config here. I guess it would be much easier if you use Vim. It, it's more like, uh, especially when you have multiple Sublime windows and stuff, it, it gets really weird. But it is possible, I have gotten it to work here and I haven't pushed this new wait option to sub launch and stuff, but I, I, I will do that here after the video. I will also publish, uh, push a, a, a polished version of this uh, add quote script as well to my GitHub soon, so whatever. But now we got this here. Uh, so after we have exited Sublime, this Sublime window, um, then we uh, um, execute this script again, add a quote here, which we can access from, from uh, zero, you know. Uh, and we pass the argument uh, will be <coughs> the content of the, uh, of the file, the temporary file, you know. F, or you know what we do, we, we, we reassign quotes to add is equal to the content and here I, I actually think th th this is like a, a, a valid place to use cat to get the content of a file into a variable. Whatever. Uh, maybe DistroTube and Luke uh, will disagree with me. I don't really care. Uh, I'll quote to add. Quote to add. And the reason I wanted to assign this to this variable here is because then I can remove the, the file here, the temporary file. F uh, before we execute dollar zero with our new quote to add and F and then uh, it will execute the script again. It will kind of wait here now till the new instance of the script is done. But as soon as that is finished, then it will exit this one as well. So so I think this is perfectly fine. Um, let's test this now. Let's see how the database. Oh, it's fine. So let's just take take this and then super shift C. Uh, let's edit this. It opens it here. I added my own line. Uh, save and quit. And there. Uh, now, now it executed the scripts again, but now with, with a new, uh, with, with this, uh, now it didn't use uh, uh, the selection, it used the argument, which was the old blah, blah, blah. But what we do is select save here. There, added a quote, thank you. And then we can see here now in that we have our new quote that we ed edited ourselves in Sublime and then we can, it works. Yeah, uh, so this video was one hour shorter than the old one, so I think it was a good idea. I re-recorded it anyways. I hope the old, but it looks like, yeah, I can see the meter here. Blum, blum, blim, blim. It works, it works. Um, I don't know. It's, it, 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 it is, um, I think this is enough. We could add like a notification here because it's, this is the issue by uh, executing uh, and waiting for an editor, a window like this. Uh, sometimes you just don't really know what's going on and a window opened and you forget about it and this script is running in the background and stuff. Can be good to just do something like this. Um, capital U, critical. Uh, Close sublime window to save quote. Then we can give this an ID also. 1333 or something. And then we just close that after sublime has been closed here. I think this will work. Um, let's see. Uh, we can test with this stuff here. So we should see. Edit. No, 
didn't get the dunstify here. We should have a dunstify. Is it lowercase u then? Uh, save. There, we could also if if we open it for to edit the the the, the quote. Uh, we could test to see if we actually did any save at all and if no change is done then just save it not uh, prompting with the menu again but sometimes i i think it's it's good to have the menu and the option to to save and most importantly maybe abort maybe sometimes you open it to edit and then then you're like no this this is just a cringe uh, 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 quote i don't want to add it to my database and then you uh, uh, select abort or escape there and, and then to make sure it doesn't get saved let's say let, let's just see if this notification works edit yes now we get this close up line window to save quote and that since it's urgent or critical this this notification will not close itself until uh, automatically it will but if i close it manually it it will work but also if I close the sublime window here, it will also work because then it will close it with this danceify commander. So I think this is this is fine. And if we select cancel here, then it also say no action, abort, quote, say good. Maybe do aborting. Yeah. Yeah, you see, it's a kind of a simple little script here, but still we do a, a, a lot of things in it, kind of, you know, I don't know. And of course, we can uh, extend this, add some better, uh, we have our old error uh, message functions and stuff, you could use them as well here, but... This is something that I will use now and collect some, some good quotes because I want that for my homepage so I can uh, generate random quotes then for, for, for the homepage uh, for, for the different pages. It would just use this. And I want to be in control of the quote uh, uh, collection and database, so to speak. Whatever. It's like none of it is really useful, but still it's like small projects like this, uh, creating this little script function here. It, just to give you some insight in, on and ideas on how things work and whatever, whatever. Have a great day, everybody. And if I don't see you before the winter solstice, uh, I wish you a good jul. Have a nice day. Bye.